Financial Feast podcast. I'm Kevin. And I'm Zach. And today we're going to be talking about misconceptions about retirement and why should we think about retirement. But first of all, one of the things we realized is we didn't tell anybody why we're called the Financial Feast Pod. We did not. That was a that was a dumb oversight. <laughs> it was. It was. So one of the things that Zach and I both really enjoy is uh, just getting a good meal. Oh, I love somewhere. food. I do too. Oh, wings. Yeah, dude. So I feel like this would be a perfect time to jump into that. This week is Cleveland Wing Week. So we live in the Cleveland area, Cleveland, Ohio, and it is Cleveland Wing Week. So at some point tonight, we're going to go get some wings. Yes. Because there's a bunch of places around us that are participating and you get like six wings, I think, for like $7. And like Absolutely. some of these places have like jumbo smoked wings, dude. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> about that. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I, I love spicy too. Yeah, so. dude, I like me some heat on my wings. Oh, yeah, that's the only good way to do it. I feel like we got a little off track there. So yeah. why are we financial feast pod, right? Yeah. So we really like food Yep. and we really like finances. And when we were talking about what do we want to talk about, we, we thought, well, how do we incorporate our passions into the title, something that kind of really encompasses what we want to talk about, and not only do we like food, so feast really worked in with that. But when I think of a feast, I think of Thanksgiving, right? Oh, yeah. And when you think of Thanksgiving, what are you thinking of? Oh, a bunch of different courses, different kinds of food, all adding up into one big meal. Yeah, and so how does that work into a financial idea of a feast then? Yeah, it's an, I think of it almost as an all-encompassing financial plan that yeah. can plan for every which aspect of your financial life. Yeah, so we really wanted to kind of hit all the topics that have to do with finance. And really, in, in our podcast and in the website that we have, really be able to hit all the different questions that people may have that deal with finance. And not just the big things, right? The big things being, you know, retirement and getting out of debt. But we really wanted to hit all the things, any questions that somebody may have on on finance. Yeah, and you know, with that, there's obviously a huge variety of topics we can talk about. But we're really starting this out with the mini series on retirement, as we referenced before. And going into that, you know, misconceptions about retirement. There's so many out there. There are a lot of misconceptions. I feel like people either by maybe by bad advice or just by not knowing and reading something on the internet, they see an idea and they kind of go with that because it worked or didn't work for somebody else. And then they just apply a certain situation to themselves and they say, well, I can't retire because of blank reason. That really just might be completely false. Yeah. And some of them might say, I have to wait till a certain age to retire or... Yeah. You know, I need a specific amount of money to retire. I don't know what that looks like, so why try? Yeah, and this is something that we hear all the time right, Absolutely with our clients. Is, yes. I mean and and I think there is there a lot of people say, Well, you should wait until you're sixty five, right, to retire, or you wait until you're sixty two, whatever that number may be, to retire. And why are we saying that that's a misconception then? Yeah, so a lot of people say that because healthcare is expensive in America. Right. Yeah. And Medicare, Medicaid, that can kind of kick in at certain points. A lot of 401ks and IRAs can't be touched until 59 and a half. Yeah. And when it comes down to all that planning, okay, if I can touch my money now, but I don't have health care, how do I handle that? And just all the different aspects that people don't know what they don't know. And sometimes they even overthink it a little bit too. Oh, people always are overthinking it, right? And I feel like, especially when it comes to finance, that's one of the easiest things to overthink. Yes. Yes. It's the number one area where you can look at it through seven different lenses and come up with seven different answers to the same problem. For sure. When we talk about needing a certain amount of money, you mentioned yeah. um, that that's another kind of misconception that people have about retirement. What are we talking about with that? Yeah, so people like to keep up their lifestyle, right? They like to uh, make sure they have enough to be comfortable in retirement. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to you know, live in a really nice house and drive nice cars and go out to eat and then retire and have to sell your house and move to a super small house right. and get a junker car and never go out to eat anymore, right? Absolutely. 
right? And so what is that amount of money? And it's different for everybody. Yeah, it is different for everybody depending on, you know, how many kids you have, what kind of lifestyle you live, like we mentioned, where you live. There's a lot of different questions that go into that. Absolutely. So using that as a, as a misconception about retirement is very valid because when it comes down to it, the lifestyle does determine retirement, but your current lifestyle might not be the same one you have in retirement, depending on your age now. And sometimes when you're younger, it's hard to plan out till retirement, not knowing exactly how much you need. And the question of is Social Security going to be there for yeah. the younger generation? Yeah, for sure. There's reports out there all the time that most of them honestly are false. But people are just kind of saying Social Security is going to completely go away. If you're this age, you're not going to have anything at all. You're not going to have. You're not going to be able to rely on that whatsoever. And that's false, right? And it may go down. There's certainly proof that yeah. it's, it's not going to be at a hundred percent. But Social right. Security's going to be there <laughs> right it, it, it sh it'll be there in some form of some way it might not even be called that anymore we yeah. don't know but there should be something there but you know one of the things I always tell my clients is plan like it's not going to be there so when it is there you're happy and you have a little extra yeah so another thing that we want to talk about too that's another misconception I feel like that keeps people from starting to save for retirement is they have a wrong understanding of the riskiness or the level of risk that comes with investing in the stock market. Right. The stock market is a whole other animal. And actually, it's just a recording time of this podcast. It's down pretty good. Yeah, it's And it's been down for a while. It too. has. It has. And one of the biggest mistakes people make is when it's down, they take their money out because they say they've lost money. But you haven't lost anything unless you sell yeah. at a lower rate. And you haven't made any money unless you sell and take those gains. Well, and the other problem is when people are looking at the stock market, like for instance right now where it's not doing well, people are saying, and I've had, I've had my, my own family come and talk to me about this, saying, well, if I put money into it, am I just going to lose all that money? Because everybody, you know, in the news and all these articles that I'm reading online are saying that we're in a horrible market and that our, our economy is really, really bad. And I don't want to lose all the money that I worked so hard for. Yeah. And, you know, that's a perfectly valid concern, I would say, especially I think the key around all of that is education, learning about where is it going? What is it doing? Sitting down with someone who knows that and can really help you will go a long way it'll kind of ease your mind a little bit more. But when it comes down to it, a good financial advisor will take a risk profile on an individual just to see how risk tolerant you are. It'll also depend on your age, when you wanna retire, and that'll kind of go a lot more into it. But as far as just the concern of even, I don't understand where my money is going, right? You yeah. know, with that one, it's, Dependence on where you're putting it, really. If it's in a 401k, it's usually a work-led uh, retirement plan, and they are distributing it amongst a bunch of different funds, which just means that it's spread around many different stocks and areas, maybe index funds. But questions people might even have at that point, which we can totally go into more detail than in later episodes, is, well, am I just kind of throwing my money into this amorphous kind of outside thing that I don't understand and it's just sitting and is it maybe growing and is it maybe losing and understanding what the stock market is and what it means when you buy a stock or when you buy a bond. That's confusing for people. Right. And that's overwhelming for a lot of people. Yes, especially since there are so many options that you can do and yeah. so many different things you can do. And just starting, how do you start, you know, when it all comes down to that? Well, the biggest mistake you can make is you just don't do anything. Yeah. Well, a lot of people, honestly, especially our age, so we're, we're 30s, right? Low we're, 30s. Yeah. And a lot of people our age or younger than us, probably younger than us, are saying, well, I don't make enough at my job to actually start saving, right? I don't make enough to swing that extra payment that it would be to start saving for retirement. And that's a huge misconception people have because I feel like when we talk to our clients, to your point, a little bit of money that you're starting with is a little bit of money, but you're starting. Yeah. 
And that's the most important thing is people that think they might not be able to afford to start is just $20 a month will go somewhere into a fund that you can start. Uh, it can buy a share and a kind of a fund that you can do. And we could get into more details about that later, but I would just say, don't let a small amount of money stop you from starting. Yeah, for sure. And, and to your point, some people along the same lines may say, well, I don't have the time to figure this out. Right. But if you don't have the time to figure it out, and maybe you are a very busy person, find someone else who does have it figured out. Yeah. And they can help you. Yeah. Hire somebody, right? Right. Or or listen to a podcast where they're explaining yes. things, which is one of the goals we want to have. Right. Is bring these hard concepts that are confusing and frankly, a little intimidating and scary to people and make them understandable so people are able to have confidence when they're making financial decisions. Right. And some people might say even it's too late. I've heard that one before. Yeah. And with that one... I'd say yesterday was the day that you should have started, but today is the day that you start now. Yeah. Today is the best day to start. And you can never start too late if you start today. And depending on your age and all of that, of course, it does play a factor. But you can, from that, be able to go into and at least start saving something. And that kind of goes back to going to someone who's a professional and helping you with a plan that will help you start. Yeah, for sure. So in addition to misconceptions, and, we'll, and we're not necessarily going to answer these misconceptions now. We just kind of wanted to outline certain things because like we said at, in, our, in our intro, this last, the last episode, that this, this is a mini-series. So we kind of wanted to take a couple steps and introduce different things about retirement. And I think the first thing we wanted to introduce were these, these things that we hear from our clients about reasons they should or should not start retirement and concerns that they have. And we kind of wanted to outline that, uh, which is, I think, what we just did. Yeah. And then in addition to that, we also now want to talk about, well, why should you start thinking about retirement? Yes. And why think about retirement? You know, some people might think, oh, I don't even want to retire. Uh, well, what's some reasons to think about retirement? It could be to achieve some goals, maybe pursue a passion that you have. But right now you can't pursue that passion because you might need to get a paycheck to just yeah. pay the bills and your passion doesn't quite pay money to do what you want to do. Yeah. So retirement would be an option. You can pursue it in retirement, traveling. Yeah, I, I, that's probably the biggest thing that we hear a lot of people would like to do in retirement is travel. Because frankly, if you're working 40 hours a week, and you have a family, <laughs> and your kids are doing sports, and I mean, you're involved in all these different things, you really don't have the time to go and visit the places that you want to visit. And when people retire, they now have that time, and they want to go and do these things, right? So traveling is a huge thing, but traveling costs money. <laughs> yes. It's not cheap to go travel and get a hotel and get all this food, you know, whatever comes into that. Yeah. It costs a lot of money. And that's something to really think about. Yeah, absolutely. And another good reason to think about would be volunteering, helping in a nonprofit, helping others. And maybe you genuinely enjoy doing something like that. And you might not have the time to do it right now. Yeah. I mean, that's probably the biggest thing with people working. It's a lack of time. And when you get into retirement, that's the biggest change in your life is now you have all of this time. And what are you going to use that time for? And that's something that it's really important for you as you're starting to plan for retirement to think about those things. Because like we said, different things cost different amounts of money. Mm -hmm. And depending on what you want to do, you might need a different amount of money. So it's important to think through these things about what you, you, you may say, right, KJ, we're, so we're, we're 30, right? Mm -hmm. We have 30 plus years until we retire according to the numbers, right? Yeah. If people are saying that, they say, well, why are you at 30 years old when you have two young kids, KJ, right? You have a six-year-old and you have a four-year-old. Yeah. Why are you thinking about retirement now at 30 years old? You have a super long time to wait. What yeah. would you say? Yeah, I, you know, for me, I am big into financial planning and planning in general. And I always like to have an idea or a plan so that I have a goal that I can hit. And for me, I like to travel. My wife likes to travel. So we do, we would like to travel a lot more when we retire and 
I really want to also spend time with my family in retirement, you know, grandkids, all that maybe in my future. And so to jump in on that though, why, why can't you think about that in 10 years when you're 40? You know, why, why start now about this thing? You have plenty of time, right? You have 30 years until you retire. You can start thinking about that 10 years down the road, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it all starts with kind of the power of compounding. Yeah. You know, and when you're really thinking about it, the younger you start, the more your money will work for you. And if you start earlier and you start now, then later on you will be happy you did. Yeah. When you have more money that you can withdraw and travel, spend time with the family, maybe even start a new business is something yeah. that you might want to do. For sure. Yeah. yeah. So and we, we can talk a little bit more in, in a in a future episode that we mentioned. We're gonna talk about the how to retire yes. so we can specifically go into what compound interest is. But I really wanted to, I, I kind of got us a little off track with that, but I wanted to make the point on it's important for people to really start thinking about it now because if you put those next 10 years in the rear view mirror because you didn't start thinking about it now, you just now lost 10 years of time to plan and time to save and time for your money to work for you. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And the time is money when it yeah, comes down to it. For sure. And uh, when you're thinking more about retirement, you know, some other reasons to think about it would just be that time itself. And also, as you get older, your health starts to go a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, realistically, so the way that I'm thinking about it is, to your point, I really want to travel a lot more, right? And my wife wants to be going to visit all these things. But when I'm 60, 65 realistically, my body is not going to be working the way it is right now. Even at 30, I can feel I'm already getting all achy. Yeah. <laughs> so I can only imagine what I'm going to be feeling in 30 years. And I'm not going to probably be wanting to hike all these different mountains and, you know, do all these big things yeah. in 30 years. Or, or maybe I do want to, but I, I may not be able to. Right. Right. And, and that's, that's one of the things that I want to think about. The sooner I retire, if I'm able to, generally, I would argue that the better my health is going to be, right? And maybe the more opportunities I'm going to have to do the things that I want to do from a time standpoint and from a from a passion standpoint, right? Yes. And that all comes down to planning and starting early and thinking about it now. And that's what we really want to encourage is to think about it now. Yeah. Yeah. Because it only comes sooner, right? Every single yes. day you're getting closer to yes. that time when you're going to retire. Right. So we hope that we kind of address some misconceptions and maybe why to think about retirement that you might have had. We'll dig deeper into some of these another time, but this is just kind of a overview of some misconceptions and then why to think about retirement. Our next episode, we're going to talk about when should you retire. Yeah. And that's going to be just talking about different aspects of retirement that you should be thinking through because retirement is not just saving money and then quitting your job. There's a lot of other kind of factors that you should think through and that's what we're going to be talking about next week. Yes. What to think about. What's your checklist you want to think through before you do it, right? Yeah. With that, we just would always encourage you visit our website, Financial Feast Pod. Pod. Look at that timing. Yep. Boom. Nailed it. <laughs> Absolutely. And Zach, once again, we'll have some articles up there. We'll dive deeper into some of these topics. You can contact us on there. There is a contact us page. We'll get an email. Uh, whatever questions you may have, we'd be glad to answer. Yeah. And like the podcast episode and, and share it with other people. Because yeah. that's really what we want to do is, is if you know somebody who's maybe thinking through these questions and has maybe talked to you about it or you talked to somebody else about it, Send them, send them the podcast and let them listen to it. And, and then maybe they have a specific question that they can reach out to us about. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Maybe they have a specific question that they can reach out to us about. Yeah. We'll see you next time.